Hare Krishna. So today we are honoring and also celebrating the appearance of Sri Gadadhar Panjit, Sri Krishna Chaitanya, Prabhu Nityananda, Sri Advaita Gadadhar, Sri Vasudhi Gaur Bhaktarindam Panchitattva, whom we worship regularly here in Ljubljana. He is the member of the Panchitattva. He is also Shakti. Panchitattva become Krishnam Bhakta Rupa Sarupakam Bhakta Avataram Bhakta Kyam Namami Bhakti Bhakta Shakti Kam Bhakta Shakti. So there's one beautiful verse here in the Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita from Adi Lila chapter 10. The chapter is called The Branches of the Chaitanya Tree. And we'll read. A very succinct but very complete. Complete means that each line is power packed with so much transcendental meaning. Describing Jaya Jaya Sri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Jaya Sri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Dvaita Chandra Jaya Gaur Bhaktarinda Jaya Dvaita Chandra Jai Gora Bhakta Vrinda Do you have the uh, on the board? Can you? Well, devotees, they can. Mm -hmm. Okay. There you go. go to the, yeah. Bharasakka Gadadara Pandi Gosani Teno Lakshmi Rupatanra Sama Kehanai Bharasakka Gadadara Pandita Gosani Teho Lakshmi Rupa Tanra Samake Hanai Badasaka Gadadara Pandita Koshani Any of the ladies? Bada Saka, <coughs> big branch, Gadara Pandit Goshani, 
the descendants or disciplic succession of Gadadhar Pandit. Gadadhar Pandit. Oh, sorry, Tenho. Gadadhar Pandit. Lakshmi Rupa. Incarnation of the pleasure potency of Lord Krishna. Tanra. His. Sama. Equal. Keha. Anyone. Nai. There is none. Translation. Gadadhar Pandit, the fourth branch, is described as an incarnation of the pleasure potency of Sri Krishna. No one, therefore, can equal him. Srila Prabhupada's purport. In the Gora Gonidesh Deepika, 147 through 153, it is stated, The pleasure potency of Sri Krishna, formerly known as Vrindavaneshwari, is now personified in the form of Gadadhar Pandit, in the pastimes of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Sri Sarup Damodar Goswami has pointed out that in the shape of Lakshmi, the pleasure potency of Krishna, she was formerly very dear to Lord as Shamasundar Vallabha. The same Shamasundar Vallabha was present in Lord Chaitanya's pastimes as Gadadhar Pandit. Formerly as Lalita Saki, she was also devoted to Srimati Radharani. Thus, Gadadhar Pandit is simultaneously an incarnation of Srimati Radharani and Lalita Saki. In the twelfth chapter of this part of the Chaitanya Charitamrita, there is a description of the descendants or disciplic succession of Gadadhar Pandit. Umagyan timirandasya gena jana salakaya chaksu un militam yena tasma shri guraveno maha. Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Srimakti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Iti Namine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gaudavani Pacharine Nirvisesa Sunyavadi Pastyatya De Sitarine Panchakalpa Tarubhishya Kripa Sindhu Pe Bhacha Bhatitanam Pavane Bhyo Vaishnave Bhyo Namaho Namaha Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadara Sivasari Gaur Bhakta Rinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare mm. So very uh, direct and complete and very powerful explanation in a very succinct form of who Gadadhar Pandit is. Ultimately, she's, he is, Sri Rati Radharani again, to assist Lord Chaitanya in his pastimes in this uh, Nam Sankirtan. Um, the uh, appearance of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was in the year 1486. And we know, we can calculate that today, if you go back about a month and a half, you get to the Lord Chaitanya's appearance. So Gadadhar Pandit appeared in the same year as Lord Chaitanya, 1486, and he is only about a month and a half younger than Lord Chaitanya. Actually, they grew up together. Even as small children, they knew each other and were intimately connected. Unfortunately, we don't have much explanations, nor do, at least I don't, know where to look for some of the early pastimes of them together. But we know, as Nimai Pandit, Gadadhar Pandit was always there. When Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu went to Gaya, after performing his pastimes as Nimai Pandit in Navadvip for a good portion of his early life, he was the arrogant scholar who was very much eulogized as the most intelligent and the most shastric learned in Navadvipa at the time. But he carried around him somewhat of an arrogance about his position and his ability. Although he was the supreme personality of Godhead, still he exhibited this kind of arrogance just to show that having attained such a prestigious position in the material realm 
of being a scholar, because in those days, as opposed to these days, scholarship, and especially about Shastra, was very much glorified as a great achievement. And pers persons were honored and supported by the entire society who excelled in these, these areas. But Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu at one point left everything. And then he took initiation from Ishwara Puri and Gaya. And when he came back, he was a completely changed person. No more the arrogant scholar. Now a very humble devotee who was ad addicted to chanting the holy names of the Lord and one who sought out the, the association of the devotees in order to do service for them. Prior to that, he would challenge them in different ways on various Shastric information. Like one time he said to Gadadhar Pandit, Gadadhar Pandit, what is the meaning of liberation? Give me your understanding. And Gadadhar Pandit very nicely explained that liberation means to be freed from all material attachments and material activities and to enter into the uh, association of the Lord in the Brahman effulgence. In other words, he gave a very correct and complete answer. But Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said to him, Gadadhar Pandit, you don't know much. Go home, study your books, and tomorrow I'll ask you again. So this is how Lord Chaitanya would tease him <laughs> in so many different ways. Now, Gadadhar Pandit, we have to explain a little bit about his nature. When we hear about and understand deeper the nature of Srimati Radharani in Sri Vrindavan Dham, she is known as a a left-wing gopi. In other words, she sometimes opposes Krishna. She gets angry at Krishna. She she criticizes Krishna. She, in other words, many times she um, is contrary in her relationship with Krishna. And that's an understanding of how the loving expression reaches higher and higher moods of happiness and ecstasy when there are various types of expressions in that loving relationship. And Srimati Radharani is expert in bringing forth these moods and giving Krishna transcendental pleasure. But here, the same Krishna, Lord Chaitanya is Krishna himself, but he also carries within his mood the internal mood of Srimati Radharani. But he's Krishna. And Gadadhar Pandit, as Srimati Radharani appearing again, is completely the opposite. So peaceful, so mild, so sweet, and so obedient to Lord Chaitanya that there's nothing contrary, or even, even the slightest bit of, uh, what we say, friction between them. But Lord Chaitanya would tease Gadadhar Pandit, and Gadadhar Pandit would just accept it. <laughs> and so now, after Chaitanya Mahaprabhu returned from Gaya, he was a completely different person. He was just always talking about Krishna, encouraging the devotees in their devotional service. And he was exhibiting various types of ecstasy. The one, one of the first meetings between Gadadhar Pandit and Lord Chaitanya was at the house of Nilambara Chakravarti. No, I'm sorry, Nilam, what was his name? Uh, yeah, Nilambara Chakravarti, I think so, yeah. Huh? There you go. One of the associates of Lord Chaitanya, it might have been Nishringa, not Nishringa, but that one Brahmachari, what was his name? Nishringa Brahmachari, there was another one. Anyway, it was a great personality. <laughs> and they had a program at the house where there was kirtan, and Lord Chaitanya started to dance in ecstasy and exhibit very deep mellows of love for Krishna and his, and his loving expression. And Gadadhar Pandit saw that for the first time, and he was overwhelmed with attraction to Lord Chaitanya. And that was one of the first incidents where the Lord exhibited such moods in, in public. 
Um, and this continued to go on, but his mother, Saji Mata, she couldn't understand what was happening to her son. He was acting really differently, and he would cry, he would call out loud, and sometimes he would fall on the ground, and he would just exhibit various types of emotions. She was concerned, thinking there was something wrong with him. <laughs> Maybe he needs a doctor. <laughs> so she would call different Kavirajas, and the Kavirajas would come and say, this is serious. He's got this wind disease. And now wind disease, when you translate it into medical terms, it's epilepsy. <laughs> So he would, and so the doctors would say, well, you have to take him and bathe him in various types of herbal oils, and this may help. But she tried, and that didn't work. And someone said, you have to take Shiva ghee and rub it on his head. That didn't work. So she was kind of discouraged. She couldn't do anything. And her son, he was exhibiting all of this ecstasy. Finally, one time, he was with Gadadhar Pandit, and then all of a sudden he went into ecstasy and said, Where is Krishna? Where is Krishna? I'm feeling lost without Krishna. Where is Krishna? And Gadadhar Pandit immediately said, Be calm, my Lord. I don't know if he didn't call him my Lord. He said, Be calm. Krishna is in your heart. Hmm. Oh, that's all he had to hear. In the mood of Hanuman, he went, he started ripping his chest open to see Krishna in his heart, and Gadadhar Pandit was saying, Oh, no. So he grabs his hands, and he's trying to hold it. Lord Chaitanya is strong. And he's struggling, and he's saying, Be peaceful, be, be patient. Krishna's coming, Krishna's coming, Krishna's coming. And gradually, by the power of Gadadhar's devotion, Lord Chaitanya started to relax, and he started... And when Sachi Mata heard about that, she said, Gadhadhar Pandit, don't ever leave my son. <laughs> Only you can control him. No one else can do that. So they had that really intimate relationship. Now at one point, Lord Chaitanya took sannyas, and therefore he decided to leave Navadweep, his family. And on the request of his mother, she asked him to reside in Jagannath Puri. And so he took up his residence in Puri. Now Gadadhar Pandit immediately didn't want any separation from the Lord, so he also joined the Lord in Jagannath Puri. So again, they were together. And Lord Chaitanya wanted to show favor to Gadadhar Pandit, so he gave him a particular deity to worship whose name was Gopinath. Now, Didi is now in the temple in Puri known as Tota Gopina. Tota means garden. Yameshwara, also another name for Gopinath. And uh, he worshipped that Didi. And Lord Chaitanya wanted to give Krishna in the form of that Didi because Gadadhar was actually seeing Lord Chaitanya in that Didi as he was worshipping the Lord. So this went on some, for some time, and then Gadadhar Pandit thought, I should take Shetra Sanyas. Now there's different kinds of Sanyas. And Shetra Sanyas means when you make a vow to stay in one holy place for the rest of your life. Sometimes ladies do that when they retire from married life. They put on white, they go to holy places, they serve the deity in the holy places and they finish their life at that way and then ultimately they have a, a very good chance to go back home, back to Godhead in that mood. So that's the recommended way. So Gadadhar Pandit, he decided, Shetra Sanyas. But, and so he, he took that vow, I will serve Gopinath and never leave Puri. But then one day, <laughs> Lord Chaitanya decided to go to Vrindavan. So he made his plan when Gadadhar Pandit found out that uh, the Lord was going to leave Puri, he said, I'm going with you. <laughs> I can't be separated from you. 
uh, Lord Chaitanya said, you can't go. <laughs> you made a vow to Gopinath to stay here and worship him. How can you go? How can you break your vow? Lord Chaitanya. And uh, Gadadhar said, well, you and Gopinath are non-different, so I'm with you, I'm with Gopinath also. Well, Lord Chaitanya didn't like that so much. <laughs> And so he couldn't answer, but he said, all right, but no, you stay here. You, If I allow you to break my vow, what will people say? Well, I will be criticized. What will people say? I caused you to break your vow. No, you stay. I'm going to Vrindavan. I want to go to Vrindavan with you. You can stay here in Puri. Puri is non different than Vrindavan. So are you non different than Vrindavan? If I'm with you, I'm with Vrindavan also. So Lord Chaitanya was defeated every time by the love, that's the point, by the love of Gadadhar Pandit. So finally the Lord decided, I'm just going to go. <laughs> so he went, he started to walk to the Mahanadi River. He got in a boat and Gadadhar was following behind. The Lord turned around from the boat and looked at Gadadhar Pandit and said, I don't, I can't remember what he said, but he said something and he just turned around and left. When he started to go in the boat, Gadadhar Pandit just fainted, fainted out of ecstasy and, and separation. Sarabhama Bhattacharya was there to pick up Gadadhar Pandit and he said, the Lord loves you, but he does not want you to break your vow. So be patient, he'll be back, he'll be back. So Gadadhar was somewhat pacified, but not really. <laughs> so the, the Lord went on to go to, uh, uh, and then uh, he stopped in a place called, mm, mm, not the Shao, and then he went on to, um, what is that other place? Ramakali. He went to Ramakali, and there was. Uh, he wanted to stop and see Rupa and Sanatana Goswami. So there's a nice description of the Lord meeting Rupa and Sanatana Goswami. They became really intimate. The Lord also told them, that, please join me in due course of time. And that's another part of that wonderful Leela. And then when he was about to leave, Sanatana Goswami said to Lord Chaitanya, I don't think it's a good time for you to go to Vrindavan. My Lord... It, do not go. It's not. It's not a good time. Lord Chaitanya listened, but then he decided to go anyway. <laughs> and as he was going, he started to think, Sanatan's right. It's not a good time. I can feel it's inauspicious for me to go at this time. So he turned around, went back to Ramakali, and then he went back to Natashala. Can I Natashala? And then he returned to Jagannath Puri. When he got back to Puri, everyone said, wow, he's back already. Everyone was happy. And then, of course, the question is, why do you have your back so far? Did you go? No, I didn't. I couldn't go to Vrindavan. Why? Because I had hurt the heart of Gadadhar Pandit. Because I made Gadadhar Pandit unhappy, the Lord would not allow me to come to Vrindavan. Very... Uh, what we say, important point that's made here. That one should never cause any kind of distress to anyone on any level, whether it's body, mind, or words. Because a devotee is always the well-wisher of everyone. And the devotee always works for the benefit of others. And the devotee always avoids causing unnecessary a distress to anyone. So that's a discretion because Krishna is in the heart of every living entity. So when we offend another person or cause unhappiness to another person for whatever reason, that means we are actually making offense to Krishna who sits in the hearts of that devotee. That might be hard to to properly execute in this age of Kali because so many times there's misunderstanding between devotees and misunderstandings is due to lack of communication and because of that people misunderstand each other although there's no mean feelings between them 
जाए सी सी पंच तत्व की जाए एक दर्द पन्ने की जाए And so the Lord explained, yes, because I, I made a Gadadhar Pandit unhappy, I could not go. There was a beautiful pastime which hap happened earlier in the life of Sri Chaitanya. I'm going to tell this pastime. It's a little bit of a revert back in the, in the chronological order of this pastimes. But it's worth telling. It's very interesting because at one point when Lord Chaitanya was in Navadvi, Pundarik Vidyanidhi came. Now Pundarik Vidyanidhi was, was a very, very great devotee. He was actually King Vrishabhanu that appeared as the father of Radharani in Vrindavan. Now he's reappeared as Pundarik Vidyanidhi. But there was a special, unusual, and somewhat uh, hard to understand nature <laughs> of uh, of uh, Pundarik Vidyanidhi, he liked opulence. <laughs> I mean, Lord Chaitanya is a bhakti veneer by Ragi Pradhan. He is renunciation personified. And his devotees follow that mood. They are very simple and very renounced. That is the mood of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Uh, but Pundarik Vidyanidhi, <laughs> He would dress in these luxurious garments that are so many beautiful colors, and he would he would put you know mascara in his eyes, and he would chew betel nut red color, and then he would look in the mirror and smile, Hari Bo, and he also had personal servants, and so he was quite ostentatious, you might say that's a, not a nice word, but he was somewhat. Flamboyant, that's a better word. <laughs> he was, and so when Lord Chaitanya heard that, not even had heard, he actually sensed that Pundarik Vidyanita had come to Navadweep. He used to call out, Father, Father, Father. No one could understand why he was calling. Then he said one day to Gadadhar Pandit, Gadadhar Pandit, I think you should meet Pundarik Vidyanita, go and hear from him. So Gadadhar Pandavir being very obedient to Lord Chaitanya. Then Lord Chaitanya said, Mukunda, hey Mukunda, Mukunda, <laughs> escort Gadadhar <laughs> to uh, Pundarik Vidyanidhi, go together. So Mukunda very uh, enthusiastically took Gadadhar Pandit and they went to the place where Pundarik Vidyanidhi was staying. And it was a nice apartment, very nice furnishers, and it was a beautiful pots and draperies and bedsteads and carpets and everything was so elegant and luxurious and beautiful. So when Gadadhar Pandit came and he saw, I'm supposed to learn from him? <laughs> he looks like a sense gratifier. Mm. Now Mukunda is really smart, right? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> He's got a good name because he fits the bill. <laughs> and uh, he, he could understand without even any communication, Gadadhar Pandit is not feeling pleased. He's thinking in a contrary way towards Pundarik Vidyanidhi. So he chanted one verse. Aho bakiyam kalastanas kutam. You know the whole verse? I don't <laughs> Uh, yeah. How, who could be even more merciful than Lord Sri Krishna who gave liberation to a witch named Putana who came with the intentions to kill her by smearing poison on her breast? That's a really weak form of paraphrase, but anyway, it's a paraphrase. In other words, he was glorifying the compassionate nature of Krishna. Although Putana had come to kill Krishna, he freed her from her witch-like nature, purified her by removing the poison, and gave her liberation, practically on the level of Mother Yasoda. Amazing! 
And he started to chant that verse loudly. When Pundarik Vidyanidhi heard that, he went mad. He started to act really crazy. He started ripping his clothes, rolling on the floor, calling out Krishna's names. And he was just in so much ecstasy. His servants saw what was happening to their master. They came running after him to hold him down, and they went flying in different directions. And oh, it was just too much. This went on for six hours. He was rolling on the ground in ecstasy. Gadadhar Pandit's thinking, oh my God, what an offense I committed. I must, I have to do something. And this, after six hours, Pundarik Vidyanita came back to external consciousness. He looked around, he was embarrassed. He sat there like a little kid who didn't do nothing. You know? he, was, he was embarrassed. <laughs> and so, Gadadhar Pandit had communicated to Mukunda that I want to take initiation from him. <laughs> because he was thinking, I have to do something to show you know, that he is actually a glorious devotee, so what else can I say? Please give me initiation. So Mukunda, he translated that or transmitted that to uh, Pundarik Vidyanidhi. And Pundarik Vidyanidhi said, Oh, how fortunate it is of a person who could have such a disciple as Gadadhar Pandit. <laughs> so he started to glorify Gadadhar Pandit in so many ways. And then it's explained at the end of this particular in Leela that father and daughter have now again become united as guru and disciple. <laughs> so beautiful, actually. And that was Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's arrangement. When, when Gadadhar Pandit went back to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and told him the whole story and how he, he took shelter of Pundarik Vidyanita, the Lord was exceedingly happy. He was very, very happy and started to glorify Gadadhar Pandit. That's a beautiful pastime, uh, which shows, it illustrates many things, how compassionate Krishna is and how we cannot judge a devotee by the external appearance. You never know. Some of the greatest devotees look like some of the most down and out people in the material world. You can't tell by their external appearance. You can tell only when they speak. It says a, a devotee is revealed by his speech. A fool is also revealed by his speech. <laughs> so if you're a fool, don't talk. <laughs> that's why I'm, I'm getting revealed right now. <laughs> so, anyway, that's another story. But I'm supposed to talk, so please forgive me. <laughs> And so this went on, and then, of course, now we uh, fast forward again to Jagannath Puri. And now, Gadadhar Pandit's there, and Jagannath Puri, Lord Chaitanya, is there. Gadadhar is very nicely worshipping his deity, Gopinath, so and, and nicely. One day, someone brought some really first-class rice to Gadadhar Pandit. He said, this is for Gopinath, cook it. So Gadadhar Pandit, with such love, such attention, and such devotion, started to cook this rice, and he offered it with beautiful prayers and with so much love to Gopinath. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is the indwelling super soul within the hearts of all living entities. He understood what was happening. Immediately came to the place of Gadadhar Pandit. He said, Gadadhar Pandit, I know you have just offered some rice. It's the best rice, and it's offered to Gopinath. I'm here. <laughs> and so Gadadhar Pandit, after offering it, he offered it to Lord Chaitanya, and Lord Chaitanya said, this rice was cooked by the, beauty, by the love of Gadadhar Pandit and offered in the same way, and Gopinath has tasted it, and now I am feeling the ecstasy of the love of Gadadhar Pandit. <laughs> so it was a beautiful exchange. And then... Um, and Lord Chaitanya would come to Gadadhar Pandit. Gadadhar Pandit loved to read Bhagavatam. He had his own copy of Srimad Bhagavatam, and he would read it regularly. So Lord Chaitanya would come to him and say, Gadadhar Pandit, uh, can you read to me? Yes, what? Well, 
I want to hear about Prahlad Maharaj, and I want to hear about Dhruva Maharaj. So it's explained by Vrindavan Das Thakur, who narrates this pastime, that these were the two favored pastimes of Lord Chaitanya. He'd love to hear the pastimes of Prahlad Maharaj and Dhruva Maharaj, two five-year-old boys who were great devotees of the Lord, not only great, but pure devotees of the Lord. And so Gadadhar would sit and Lord Chaitanya would listen and Gadadhar would read so beautifully. He was so gentle, so soft, so unassuming. He had such a sweet nature, Gadadhar Pandit. And he would read and Lord Chaitanya would be absorbed and he would finish the pastime and then he would say to Gadadhar, read it again. And Gadadhar would immediately begin to read again. And he would read it again. And then Lord Chaitanya would say, read it again. And this went on to, and Vrindavan Das Thakur, who speaks this, he said this, sometimes he would listen up to a hundred times the same pastime. This is Lord Chaitanya. He was teaching, although he was also experiencing how important it is to hear Srimad Bhagavatam. Nasta prayeshu abhadresha nityam bhagavata sevaya bhavati bhakti bhavati uttama sloke bhakti bhavati naistiki. That one should daily hear the message of Srimad Bhagavatam. It is a regulative principle. We must every day read or at least hear Srimad Bhagavatam. Otherwise, we are not going to make advancement. Bhagavatam is the best of all religious scriptures. It is Amalam Purana. It is Paramahansa Samhita. It is the pure narration of Krishna's pastimes. And the essence of that narration is Krishna in Vrindavan, which is the pinnacle or the height of Krishna's transcendental leelas and with his loving devotees. And so Bhagavatam is full, as Srila Prabhupada said, everything you need is in Bhagavatam. Every subject is covered in Srimad Bhagavatam. You might say, how is that possible? Just read it. <laughs> you will see, as Prabhupada expands on these verses, you'll see how he presents so many of other subjects in relationship to the verse, because each verse, there was a there was a, a morning walk conversation with Srila Prabhupada and one professor from Germany. His name is Professor Durkheim. So Prabhupada liked Professor Durkheim. They actually immediately clicked together. Prabhupada would talk to him very openly and friendly. And Professor Durkheim was very respectful to Prabhupada, but also very intelligent in their discussions. So at one point, Prabhupada starts to glorify Srimad Bhagavatam. And he says, Bhagavatam has 18,000 verses, and it takes one month to understand each verse. And so then he turns to his disciples who are there. How long is that? One month for each verse, 18,000 verses. Anybody really quick with mathematics here? Correct. <laughs> Exactly correct. 1,500 years. And when Prabhupada heard it, he said, you have enough to read. <laughs> In other words, you can make Bhagavatam your whole life and you will not exhaust Srimad Bhagavatam. You will not even begin to penetrate the, the depths of Bhagavatam. It is so deep. And Gadadhar Pandit used to read and Lord Chaitanya used to absorb himself so much in Bhagavatam. We're getting to the end of his particular pastime. And then, of course, as time went on, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu decided to wind up his pastimes after receiving the message from Advaita Acharya that it's time to, uh, you know, finish up your pastimes. Everything you wanted to do has been done. Now leave. <laughs> Advaita Acharya was the one who called him, and now he's also giving him the hint time to go back. So the Lord was making his plan to leave. So one day there was a, a raging kirtan in the, in, the, in the Gopinath temple. 
and all the devotees were chanting and dancing and dancing and chanting and chanting and dancing and dancing and dancing and chanting and chanting and dancing and dancing and chanting and chanting and dancing and dancing and chanting and chanting and chanting no prashadam yet chanting and dancing and dancing and chanting and chanting and chanting and dancing and dancing and dancing and chanting and chanting and dancing and dancing and dancing and chanting and more dancing and chanting okay there was more i just touched the surface and so after some time Lord Chaitanya went into ecstasy and he left the kirtan and went into the deity room. And then after some time, everybody noticed Lord Chaitanya is not around. And then all of a sudden, this feeling of unhappiness just pervaded the whole atmosphere. And everyone, oh my God, he's gone. They could all feel it. He's no longer with us. And when they looked around everywhere, he was gone. And that's the last time he, they saw him. And what Chaitanya Mahaprabhu did is that he merged his existence into the body of Gopinath. Why did he leave that way? He wanted to show his love for Gadadhar Pandit, who was the worst, that was his worshipable deity. So in order to show his love for Gadadhar Pandit, he actually merged himself into that deity. And if you go, you'll see that Didi, on the right leg of the Didi, on the calf, there's a mark. And the Pujaris, they tell you that this is where Chaitanya Mahaprabhu entered into the Didi. <laughs> Whether that's true or not, we can accept it because there's no contrary stories. <laughs> so we can go ahead with that. But um, that and then Lord Chaitanya disappeared. When Gadadhar Pandit understood Lord Chaitanya was no longer his his unhappiness reached such high limits that it was possible impossible for him to go on. So it was explaining that he was aging one year every day because of the separation. When you love someone <laughs> and that person is no longer in your life, how all of a sudden the whole world has no meaning at all. There's no meaning, and it's just like a dreary void. And you just feel, you don't even, you don't want to eat, you don't want to sleep, you don't want to do nothing. You can't do all nothing. All there is is a big vacuum in your life, and you just think. You don't think. You just suffer. <laughs> That's all you do. And so, that was Gadadhar Pandit's state of consciousness. He was just... But then, at one point... Srinivasacharya comes. Now he was instructed by Mother Sachi that if you want to learn Srimad Bhagavatam, you can hear it and learn it from Gadadhar Pandit. So go to Puri and, and find Gadadhar Pandit and ask him to teach you. So he arrives and now Gadadhar Pandit is being approached by Srinivas. And he wants to help this person and so he starts to teach him Srimad Bhagavatam. But when Gadadhar Pandit was reading the Bhagavatam, after Lord Chaitanya would leave, he would just cry. And when he would cry, the entire the, the, the ink would be smudged and he couldn't read the Bhagavatam anymore. So when he was trying to teach Srinivas, it became impossible. So at one point he said to Srinivas, I can't read this Bhagavatam. So take it, go back to the scribes in um, Navadweep, have it recopied, bring it back, and we'll continue. But when Sri, uh, uh, Srinivas left to do that, Gadadhar Pandit again fell into deep ecstasy of separation. It's described that he, when he was trying to dress the deity of Gopinath, because of his quick aging, now he was only 48 years old. Lord Chaitanya left when he was 48. It said he was like an old man, although he was only 48. And when he tried to put the garland on the deity, he, he had a difficult time. His body would shake. When he tried to put the crown on the deity, he couldn't reach it anymore. And at one point, when he was trying to lift the crown up, it was impossible. And then all of a sudden, Gopinath sat down. <laughs> the deity sat down just to give his devotee an easy way to dress him. And actually, you can go and see in Jagannath Puri, those of you who have been there, 
you'll see that Gopinath is in a sitting position. He sat down just to give pleasure or just to show his love for his devotee. But during that time when Srinivas was gone, uh, he took some time and when he came back, Gadadhar Pandit had disappeared from the planet. And this was true with many of the disciples of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. After the disappearance of the Lord, it was impossible for them to continue to live. And one after another, they were all disappearing from the planet. How much love the devotees had for Lord Chaitanya is impossible to describe. The love was so deep and so complete that that's all they could think about and it's all they wanted to serve was Lord Chaitanya. And so when he left, there was no meaning to life. And so out of ecstasy of separation, many of them just left the world. <laughs> There was no apparent reason for their leaving except love and separation. And so, uh, and Gadadhar Pandit, of course, left to get. Uh, so, this is a little bit, not much, about the life of Gadadhar Pandit. There is many more wonderful pastimes in, about Gadadhar Pandit. He is so deep in his relationship with Chaitanya Mahaprabhu as he explained that he is a combination of Srimati Radharani and Lalita Saki together. And it's interesting because Radharani, she can be fiery and she can be sweet. Lalita Saki is always fiery. <laughs> she has that fiery nature. <laughs> and so they've combined into Gadadhar Pandit, but Gadadhar Pandit is the opposite. <laughs> when... Uh, when um, Vallabhacharya came to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Vallabhacharya was a great was a great devotee, and he was quite well versed in shastra. He knew scripture quite well, and he decided to do a commentary on some of the cantos of Srimad Bhagavatam. And he was very proud of what he had done. So he went to Srimad, to Lord Chaitanya and said, "I have created a commentary." on Srimad Bhagavatam, which surpasses the commentary of Sridhar Swami. Now, Sridhar Swami is the original and accepted commentary on Srimad, commentator on Srimad Bhagavatam. So Lord Chaitanya didn't like that. And he said, anyone who does not accept the Swami is a prostitute. Because <laughs> another name for Swami, or meaning for Swami, is husband. <laughs> you know, Swami also means husband. So a wife doesn't accept her husband. She's a what? What I said. <laughs> and so when, uh, you know, Balabhachari, he didn't like that. And Lord Chaitanya just dismissed him. He just did something different. But Balabhachari wanted to impress Lord Chaitanya by his learning. So one day he compiled a whole list of names of Lord Krishna. And uh, he wanted to, you know, read that list to Lord Chaitanya. So he said, Lord Chaitanya, I have compiled the list of the names of Lord Krishna. Lord Chaitanya said, I only know two names. <laughs> Yasomati Nandana and Shamasundar. That's all I know. <laughs> and so he immediately dismissed him again. <laughs> and one day, Balabhachari, he always wanted to impress Lord Chaitanya by his learning. He said, how is it that we are chanting the name of Krishna? We are like the wife of Krishna, and it says in the Shastra that the wife should never speak her husband's name out loud. Got that, ladies? Okay. Nobody's moving. <laughs> what is the proper terminology between husband and wife? Does anyone know? A, a wife calls a husband what? Prabhu, and what does the wife, husband call the wife? Davy. Davy. Try that. Your wife, you'll... Even the Sanyasis You know, we read about them. <laughs> we don't know them. We just get the theoretical understanding. We repeat. That's what we're supposed to do. <laughs> he has to teach it to the household. We have to what? He has to teach it to the household. Not me. <laughs> It's not teachable. <laughs> not not in today's age. 
And so Lord Chaitanya said, yes, that's true, but if the husband tells the wife to speak his name, she must obey. <laughs> so therefore he defeated, he defeated him again. So every time he came, Lord Chaitanya would either defeat him or ignore him. And then he tried to use his knowledge on the other devotees, and they, they, they knew Lord Chaitanya's mood, so they wouldn't listen to him. But one day he had written something, and he wanted to find someone to read it to, so he immediately found Gadadhar Pandit, and he sat next to him and started reading real fast <laughs> before Gadadhar Pandit could run away. <laughs> and Gadadhar Pandit is not that type of person, so he was thinking, oh my God, he's a great personality. But Lord Chaitanya doesn't want us to listen to him. What am I going to do? <laughs> so that's what he was thinking in his heart. So he started to pray to the Lord. My dear Lord, I, I don't want to offend him. But, you know, at the same time, I don't want to listen to him. So please forgive me. <laughs> I don't know what to do. Because he was like that. He didn't want to hurt his feelings by leaving him. And so, um, and later on, he sat there and listened. And later on, Subdhamadar Goswami said to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, no, he actually said it to Gadadhar Pandit, why did you listen to him? You know what Lord Chaitanya is like. And then Lord Chaitanya intervened and said, it's okay. <laughs> he, didn't, he didn't chastise Gadadhar, because he knew Gadadhar Pandit's heart was he just didn't want to offend him by just acting differently. And so that was a little story about Vallabhacharya. Vallabhacharya is actually a great personality, and he is the founder of the Pushti Marg, which is one of the uh, lineages of devotion, which are they have their sampradayas mostly around Sri Vrindavan Dham. Right. Yes. Yes. Right. That's a yeah. That's a good point. Ultimately, he he actually was attracted to Gadadhar Pandit. Gadadhar Pandit became his, his his guru. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. It took Gadadhar Pandit's humility and soberness to to help him realize that he was a rascal. <laughs> yeah, right. But he's he's written some commentaries. Not he didn't do the whole Bhagavatam, but he did some. And then there was that story. Maybe you heard. And, the devotees, knowing this pastime, wrote an article in the Back to Godhead magazine. And the article was somewhat putting down Valbacharya. And it got back to Sumati Morariji, the lady who sponsored Srila uh, Prabhupada's voyage. She was the head of the Skindia steamship liner, the boat that Prabhupada went over. And uh, she became very upset, and she wrote a letter to Prabhupada, you know, saying they're criticizing my spiritual master. <laughs> Prabhupada, I don't know what he said to her, but he somehow or other he tried to pacify her and said, well, my disciples don't know so much, you know. <laughs> so I'll, I'll, I'll instruct them. And then Prabhupada gave a little instruction. He said, satyam priyam, satyam bruyam, that one should speak the truth in a palatable way. That's not always easy, and sometimes it becomes very uh, difficult because palatability may also be a state of consciousness where a person doesn't accept it, even though it is palatable. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so Prabhupada in somewhat, not chastised, but corrected his disciples for writing that article. So that's a little bit about Vallabhacharya. Okay, so we're right at the hour, which is the conclusion of the talk. I'll open it up and see if there's anyone that would like to ask a question before we end. Any questions or comments? Comments? No? Okay, yeah, oh, okay, yes. Um,
I forgot your name. Uh, um, Mar Marcel. Marcel. Yeah. Acha. Thank you. Um, thank you for inspiring lecture. Um, I would just like to ask, you know, mentioned the importance of reading Srimad Bhagavatam. Um, could you please um, tell, uh, tell uh, some, um, some tips or some um, ways to read efficiently? So what are some ways, some advices to read efficiently Srimad Bhagavatam? I think Prahlad Nandamars can answer that better than I could. <laughs> but I'll try and then Maharaj will put the topper on it. <laughs> so the point is, schedule it. If you want to read, you got to schedule it. You just don't, because reading always gets sidelined. But if you put it in your schedule as part of your day and make that make that a part of, well, this is my time for reading Bhagavatam. So then you put that time aside. You might readjust your schedule, but if you don't make it part of your schedule, you generally forget to do it or neglect to do it, either one. Yeah. When I was here, when I before I went traveling, I was I just went traveling for two months, and that travel just threw my schedule up in the air. And one of the things that got lost was Bhagavatam. I just wasn't able to find the time to read again, and whatever schedule I created, I couldn't fit it in. <laughs> it was just too many things going on with travel and preaching. I couldn't do it. And so now I came back, and this morning was the first day I was back, and what did I do? I read Bhagavatam. <laughs> I said, Whew, meeting the old friend again. <laughs> so, yeah, so sometimes I wasn't able to schedule it. It's just because of what I was doing. But then when I came back, I said, here's the time, and I'm going to put it in, and this is what I'm going to do at this time. And when you do that, and you become, if you, after doing it a few days, you get a taste for that reading. Once the taste develops, and you look forward to that time. It's no more, a, you know, just a scheduled pro program. It's something you look forward to. Okay. Thank you. Anything you want to add, Marge? <laughs> okay. We're an equal opportunity employer here. <laughs> okay. Well, there's unlimited numbers of ways we can become attracted to the Bhagavatam. But the most, well, one way is that we have to assimilate it. We have to digest it. It's like if you eat a fantastic meal, but you don't assimilate it, you don't digest it, then it has no effect. So we, when we read, we should make sure that we're actually hearing the Bhagavatam. I know like for one day, I was reading the Bhagavad Gita. Well, I was going on, I was on book distribution. And no one would take a book for, for an hour. I was getting really frustrated. So I sat down and read the, I read the Bhagavad Gita, and it said that everyone is Krishna's servant. Something very simple and that we should try to help them. So I said, wow, that's it. <laughs> They're all Krishna servants, I should try to help them. And I went out there enthusiastically and everyone took a book. <laughs> but it took me, because my mind was so agitated, it took me at least three or four times to read the same thing over and over again, till finally I actually heard what it was saying. And I said, wow, that's fantastic. Yeah, yeah, we get a whole change of consciousness as soon as we get a change of consciousness. <laughs> Krishna says, oh, okay, you got it now. <laughs> yeah, so we should read it until we actually hear it. Yeah. And one way of actually making sure we've heard what we read is to read something and close the book and see if we actually can remember what we just read. Yeah. At least the book that we read. It's not... A <laughs> <laughs> well, you're making it too easy now. <laughs> oh, sometimes it gets hard. <laughs> Okay, so yeah, yeah, it's just, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, what was that class about? Uh, what was a good class? What would he? What did he say? That was interesting. <laughs> What'd you read today? Uh, Bhagavatam. Which part? Oh, come on! Don't ask so many questions. <laughs> yeah, the forgetfulness is a feature of Kali Yuga. <laughs> Uh, then the next step after we, if we can remember, then we should try to see what it's saying. Right. 
what's actually being, what's, what Krishna is telling us, what Prabhupada is telling us. And then if we understand it, then we should see the opportunity to apply it in our lives. Mm -hmm. And if we do that, then it becomes realized. And the thing is that Bhagavatam is talking to us when we read it. It's not just theoretical philosophy that is on the pages. It's being spoken to us, and we are the recipient of that. We take it as personal as we read it. Yeah, probably it's talking to us also. Yeah. Yeah, directly. I tell one little story in my life, that, not to illustrate anything special, but... Uh, but it happened, and it, it's a really a powerful experience I had. I was reading Bhagavatam for a long time in my room in Chicago many years ago. And I was reading, 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 reading. And then at one point, I was no longer reading, but the words were speaking right from the page. I was hearing, hearing Srila Prabhupada's voice speak the words as I was going through the words. And this went on for some time. And I was thinking... Yes, Prabhupada said, I'm in my books. <laughs> if you want to, want to associate with me, read my books, I'm here. And then after one point it stopped, and, and that was the only time that ever happened. But I took it as a message that, yes, Prabhupada said he's in his books. And he wanted me to help, uh, help me understand that. So if you, can, you want to associate with Srila Prabhupada, you want to associate with higher knowledge, just read as if it's it's coming directly to you. It is. Just read in that way. It's about you. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure there's a reason for that. <laughs> but I'm not going to try and figure it out. <laughs> Only mothers can figure that one out. <laughs> Sundar Gopal, <laughs> you had a question. <laughs> you were pointing to him. Be careful. <laughs> okay. All right, so we'll stop here. Now, I think there's prasadam for everyone. And it's a feast for Gadadhar Pandit's uh, appearance. So thank you very much. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. His Holiness and the Bhagavan Swami Maharaj Ki Gadadar Pradhananda Swami Maharaj Ki Gadadar Pandit Ki Jai